Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another streaming broadcast of the Kingdom of Faith World Outreach Ministries. I'm your host, presenter, Pastor Jeff Pope. And as always, you all, I'm excited about this teaching. But this is even more important of a teaching for me this morning because it's an area that I enjoy teaching on. And it's dealing with the Spirit of God this morning. So just embrace your, uh, the teaching this morning so that uh, maybe it will help transform you into another dimension of thought this morning. Whereas all of the things that are going on right now, the chaos and the confusion that's out here, I think this teaching is so appropriate for the times that we're experiencing right now. So without further delay, let's get into this teaching on this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come before you this morning and say thank you. Thank you once again for this, another day, and an awesome opportunity to be a difference maker in your kingdom. Father, you see, we each realize that had it not been for you, none of us would be here on today. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Now, Father, as I go into this teaching on this morning, none of me and all of you, that you get the glory out of this. And that those hearers of your word will not only be hearers, God, but they will be doers also. Let these words come forth with power and conviction on today that no man is left feeling empty or void. Father, we each love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, good morning. I'm your host, Pastor Jeff Polk of the Kingdom of Faith World Outreach Ministry, and we have a great teaching for you this morning. So grab your Bibles. Let's get right into this teaching. And as is customary in our ministry, when the Word of God is being read, we'd like for you to stand. But regardless of whether you're standing, get your mind ready. Clear your canvas this morning, you all. I'm about to paint a very good spiritual picture for you, and I pray that it's empowering once this has been done and taught. Where our sermon text this morning, it comes from Isaiah chapter 61. Actually, it's the entire chapter 61 of Isaiah. It's only 11 verses of it, but it is pertinent to this teaching that it be read into your hearing so that we can get into this teaching. So again, it's Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 11. And the word of God reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old ways, they shall rise up the former desolation, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion. They shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. I will direct their works in truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seeds which the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornament, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. My subject for teaching on this morning, you all, is the value of the Spirit of God. The value of the Spirit of God. Now, oftentimes, God will use physical and natural metaphors in order to bring about an understanding of spiritual truth. 
those of us who have been called to a higher level of teaching, if you will, we should make much of this practice in our own teachings and that of, you know, using actual natural metaphors to bring about us an understanding of spiritual truth, such as my cup runneth over, meaning more than enough for me, but just enough for everyone else without none of it being wasted or out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, meaning a continuous outpouring of the inspired truths of God. But none of this happens without you knowing the value of the Spirit of God that is within you. The Bible teaches that all things are possible to them that believe in the promises of God, regardless of the naysayers. What's even greater, it does not matter if it never has been done before or seen by a natural person. What matters is whether or not you can believe in and stand on the internal voice of God that is speaking to you. This is why it is called spiritual warfare, not physical warfare, because in order to defeat and be victorious over the adversary, you must be able to outthink the adversary. The level of faith and belief that it requires to move God on your behalf does not require others to believe you. Yes, it would be nice. It would be awesome if they would be able to touch and agree with the Spirit of God and in that same Spirit, but it is not necessary that others believe in you. You have to believe in God for yourself. I believe it was David who put it best. He says, when I didn't have anyone else to encourage me, I encouraged myself. There are going to be many times you are going to have to go it alone for the depths of the things that you have asked God for. This does not mean that others don't care. It suggests that sometimes God just wants it to be you and him alone. We have to really embrace the spiritual teachings that we're talking about. Because when we talk about spiritual things, you all, I've said it in other teachings, if you weren't privy to those teachings, anytime you hear the word spiritual being you, it has to do with mind, thought, and thinking. It's a concept that we use. Notice what there's a passage in the Bible that says that, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Many people uh, like to quote that. But understand this. It wasn't talking about them physically putting their hands on you. So if it's not a physical touching of you, then it has to be spiritual. Those are the options. If it's not a physical touch, then God, I know for sure, was talking about that spiritual. That of putting their mouths on you, speaking against you. Doing things that God did not, perverting the will of God concerning you. Anytime another does that towards you, that is touching you in an unlawful way as it pertains to the things of God. So we have to be more Christ-like minded in our thinking in order to move God. When the Bible teaching suggests that we are the healed of God. Now here's where you need to pay very close attention to this teaching. Because I think that it will move you into another dimension of thought, another dimension of faith. Remember now, I just told you that it would be nice if others agreed with you, but it is not necessary. This is why you have scriptures that says, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Every man must give an account of himself. These scriptures already clearly define to you that this walk is so that you pull off the walk according to the will of God. No man is responsible for whether or not you make it or don't make it into the kingdom of heaven. But what it is, when each of us are doing our God's best and we are meeting God's approval, God can place any of us together and we become a force of demonic destruction because we each are serving God to the fullest capacity that has met God's approval. So the harmon the harmony of God is already in our relationship, even if we have never physically met before. This is the beauty about God when we understand the Spirit of God. So the, as this lesson's title suggests, the value of the Spirit of God. Let's get back into the flow of the teaching. When the Bible teaches, or when Bible teaching suggests that you are the healed of God, past ten. You are the healed of the Lord. It is speaking of a place in eternity. Now, pay very careful attention to this teaching. If you were to cut your finger and three months from now, it was completely healed. That time it took to heal was already recorded in eternity. And it was just a matter of time catching up to what eternity had already accomplished. Now, listen to this. Notice what I said. When you cut your finger in the natural, three months from now, your finger is healed. 
that time was already recorded in eternity. So it's important now that you pay close attention to when you hear scriptures like you are the healed of the Lord. By his stripes I am healed. Past tense. It's already done. Many of you say I'm going through stuff now and it hasn't happened for me. This is why this teaching, again, I'm going to be very specific when I'm saying this. This is about what you believe. Not what everybody else has believed or believed for you. Not what anybody else has seen before or has never seen before. It's about you according to your faith be the things of God unto you. So, again, this is why the Bible says that if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Eternity always was, is, and will be. But it is time that delays the manifestation. Our challenge as time-conscious being is to be transformed into eternity-minded beings as was and is with the mind of Christ. You all, that going back to what I said, three months, you slice your finger. And three months from now, it's healed. That time was already recorded in eternity when your finger was going to be completely healed. So what if the way that we think is the reason or the delayed manifestation in the things of God in our life? I believe that by faith, I will see the manifestation of God's completed work. I will see his glory manifested in my life. This is my, this is my love letter that I'm sharing with you this morning. This is what I believe. It would help you if you can find your place in this to believe. I, you know, it would be nice, again, if everybody believed. That, that's not what I want you to even focus on. Well, I've never heard anybody good. Good, then you be the example of God doing this thing. This becomes a part of your testimony. Because if my healing has already been done, because I believe in the God of eternity, meaning God always was, is, and will be. And when the Bible tells me that I have been become the healed of God, even though I'm in time in the present, it hasn't happened for me. The Bible says this. I, I, I will emphatically tell you that I believe that every word of God is true. And then, so how can I regress now or back off of what I say that I believe in when things aren't manifesting immediately for me? But I think that it is a part of it, a large part of it, if you all, is in how we think. I have to be Christ-like minded in my thinking. So the what I'm sharing with you is what I believe, and I pray that you find it, because I know what I'm teaching this morning, you all, as all of my teachings, it lines up with scriptures. It's just that, do we think of it, or do we, we receive it in the depth that God is requiring of us to do? Father, Holy Ghost, would it be appropriate in prayer to call or send time, my present conditions, into eternity for the release of the glory of God now? From time, we call on eternity to release its blessings now. In the name of Jesus, I send these or this infirmity into eternity to be released in the now. My healing that resides somewhere in eternity, I'm calling it because this is spiritual now. It's not a natural thing. It is the spiritual things that defies the natural. And when it is the Spirit of God, it becomes a supernatural thing. And it is the supernatural that defies the natural. So, in the name of Jesus, I send this infirmity to that place in eternity where healing resides to be retrieved in the now. I'm calling out of eternity every healing, deliverance, breakthrough, manifestation that the Word of God says that I can have in the present. Calling and standing on those things that be not as though they were. Time will no longer hold us hostage to what has already been recorded and available to us in eternity. It is spiritual deliverance that releases us from the bondages of the natural. I am the healed of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, move my faith into that next dimension of spirituality that I may comprehend more of you. This prayer of faith is to be retrieved in me right now for a right now type of manifestation, you all, in Jesus' name. No longer allowing time to dictate what eternity says I can already have. And every time that Satan tries to rear his ugly head and bring about fear and doubt in this newfound revelation, we rebuke adamantly. We adamantly rebuke him in the name of Jesus. It is the spiritual that defies the natural, bringing it subject to the will of God by his spirit that lives within you. It is the spirit. Spiritual that defies the natural, bringing it subject to the will of God, to his spirit that resides in you. By your spirit, only natural things will happen. 
but by the Spirit of God, supernatural things will happen. It is only by the Spirit of God that His life-changing word of supernatural authority and of power proceeds from our mouth. This is what Isaiah 55 and 11 talks about. The words that proceed out of your mouth, they shall not return back unto your void. The words that proceed out of your mouth don't become the words of God until it is led by the Spirit of God. What you say has to be led by the Spirit of God in it in order for it to be that type of word with that type of power, with that type of authority. So when the words that proceed out of your mouth are led by the Spirit of God, it is by your sin nature that we experience the bondages of this world, but it is by the Spirit of God that we have the liberty to experience all things God. It's not the Word of God coming out of your mouth until what comes out of your mouth has been led by the indwelling Spirit of God that is within you. That's what gives the things that you say power. That's what brings about the healing of God. That's what brings about the manifestation of the things of God. It is the words of God, you as those who have been called to do His bidding in the earth world. It is the words of God that you are spirit-led to speak into this atmosphere that brings about the things of God. Check this out. When people are contemplating coming to God, have, or I suggest it this way, let me say it this way. Many people contemplating coming to God have the order or approach incorrect. You don't find a good church first. You establish the desire to be in right relationship with God first. Now, I think many, I'm going to find me a good church and I'm going to get my act together. Now, before you even get to that good church part, you need to establish that desire in you. I'm going to start serving God. I'm going to start doing the things that God would have me to do. Because a lot of times, and this is no offense against the popular churches, because a lot of popular churches are great churches. I'm not speaking that. But the order, I'm going to join that church. The order is incorrect. You have the purpose in your heart that I'm going to I'm going to go somewhere that I can plant myself, which could very well be that popular big church. But I'm going to plant myself somewhere where I can grow and be fruitful and most productive. This that's a great thing. But I'm telling you spiritually, you have to get that in you, the desire to become that type of person in finding that great house of God where you can worship and grow and plant yourself. So I'm just uh, suggesting to you of a truth that. The order that many people come to God and, and then you go to church because if you're not careful, you'll start to appreciate the people more than you appreciate God. So this is my whole, uh, the crust of what I'm saying here for you today. You know, I don't want you not to join the big church or a small church, wherever you decide to go, but I want you to do it in the proper order. And the proper order is that you should first desire to have that relationship with God before finding you this great church because, um, it's so important to you all that you understand this. And I do this in my um, foundational and introductory teaching. I think it would be very valuable to those, the rest of us or in some form. You know, we all teach a little different, but it should still equate to God's truth. The end results should uh, equal out to being God's truth, however our delivery styles are. But one thing that I think that is very important for that for a person who's coming to God and in and, and, and the very introduction and the foundational teaching that we have is to understand the arenas of the Spirit of God. The arenas of the Spirit of God are around you, in you, and upon you. The arenas of the Spirit of God. The, the, the arenas of the Spirit of God is around you prior to accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Many of you can attest to this. You know, your first mind has always been trying to keep you out of trouble. That was the Spirit of God that was not yet in you because the Spirit of God will not enter into you until He's invited. So, the spirit of the arena, the first arena of the spirit of God, because of a sin nature, we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. God is not in us at birth. The spirit of God is available. It's around us. So it is keeping us. So when prior to accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the spirit of God is around you. Now, upon acceptance of Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the spirit of God now indwells you. It's in you now. And when this spirit is in you, now it is for the purpose of leading and guiding you into all manners of truth. And it is upon you for the specific assignment of God's bidding in the earth realm. When Jesus says this, his strength is made perfect in our times of weakness or temptation. This is when the spirit of God comes upon you specifically for what you are immediately facing. My strength is made perfect in your times of weakness. You need some immediate God-type thinking in order to overcome your adversary 
I said it earlier on, you're not going to defeat your adversary unless you know how to outthink your adversary. To present your bodies as a living sacrifice set apart for God's use only is to allow the Spirit of God complete access to think through your mind and to speak through your vocal cords. And we must purpose in our heart to let God have his way in every area of our life. So when we see that scripture coming out of Romans 12, I present my, or it would be to your advantage to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This holy part set aside for God use only. I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice because you do know that your physical body is only the results of how you think. So your thinking need to be the type of God way of thinking in order that your animation that can be seen physically by men represent God in his total capacity. In order to worship God in spirit and truth, it has to be accomplished apart from your sin nature way of thinking. And this is done by the keeping spiritual mechanisms of God, which are the spirit of God and the indwelling Holy Ghost. But none of these keeping mechanisms can happen without accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Our thinking has to be ahead of and protected by, from Satan's evil influence. This is best accomplished by knowing immediately what the Word of God, Jesus, and the Bible says that we clearly distinguish the inspiration of God from that of Satan. If you don't know what the Word of God says, if you don't know what Jesus says, how can when you have thoughts in your head clearly distinguish it, whether it be of God or of Satan? This is why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. The approval is knowing by revelation what it is that God would have you to do in the earth realm. So, it is best accomplished by you knowing what the Word of God says so that when you hear that voice, Father, I surrender all of my beings that I may be led and guided by your Spirit in all of my doing here in the earth realm. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You know I keep concluding this with in Jesus' name because this is what the Bible says. When I'm petitioning God in prayer, I'm letting him know that in no way, form, shape, or fashion am I not acknowledging your son in everything that I do in the earth realm because I acknowledge the sacrifice. It's bigger than that, but we won't go into that teaching. But you have to understand there's a purpose, there's a reason why you acknowledge the son in prayer so that the Father will honor your request. We have to make it up in our minds and be adamant that our eternal existence is going to be spent with our Father in heaven. To say that a thing profits you nothing is to mean that it does nothing to secure your desired place in eternity. Now, you just said, I've made it up in my mind. I'm adamant that I'm going to spend eternity when God in heaven. So when things are not profitable to you, no matter what it is in the, this physical earth realm, it does nothing for your spiritual existence in eternity where you have professed and you have made it known that I'm going to spend eternity with God in heaven. To say that nothing or a thing profits you nothing, it means that it does nothing for you securing your desired place in eternity. Every act of your animation ought to be essential to your eternal existence. Since our animations are the results of our way of thinking, is why every Christian must be led by the thoughts of this God or by the Spirit of God. Am I every thought? It must be led by the Spirit of God. What would happen if your physical body, if in your physical body, if one of your members decided not to work? Now, this is going to be touchy. It's going to be a little edgy for some folks, but I like it. You know, I'm loving God for bringing this because we keep talking about the value of the Spirit of God. But listen to this. Since our animation, no, no, what would happen to your physical body if one of its members decided not to work? The body itself would be limited and less effective in performing what it was designed to do. The same is true when any member of the body of Christ decides not to work. It renders the body as a whole less effective than it could be if all members were working together in God's harmony. Now, when it comes to working in your local churches, here's where the edgy part comes. When it comes to working in your local church, if you refuse to work in it, not only are you a liability, but you render that church less effective than it could be because of the sin in you. Many church hoppers have left ministries where they were not totally vested using the classic excuse of having outgrown the ministry. The truth is whenever you are attempting to serve two masters, you can never be fulfilled by either because the nature of Satan is in you is why you have been unable to consistently 
be a working member of any church. Yes, I said it. You're trying to serve two masters. You go into a church. This is why you can't totally commit to a ministry. This is why you can't totally be vested in a ministry because you're in there on a false pretense. You're trying to serve two masters. You want to go to church on Sunday and you want to look and you want to do all of the acts and animation and you want to portray that you're such a super Christian and spiritual, but on Monday morning, you're back to the chameleon effect of being transformed or conformed back into your sin nature way of thinking because you want to look good before everybody. See, that's a hypocrite because everybody doesn't don't love God. So how is it that you can be liked by everybody? I'm not saying that you have to hate anybody, but what you do, you are clearly and free to hate the spirit of influence that's not of God in any person. So what I'm telling you all, the sin in you is what cannot commit to any relationship without being distracted by the appearance of something better. As it pertains to committing to the local church, you will leave one and in hypocrisy pretend to work for a season until your sin nature itch begins to gnaw at you. Most often the reason for many church hoppers is due to accountability, either the unbiased accountability or the lack thereof, and most importantly due to being void of the Spirit of God. When I, why, Pastor, why did you get out here on these, these, these church hoppers and stuff? Because we need each one of us. Look at the time period that we're in. You know, all of this chaos, all of this confusion, all of the pandemic that's going on, every, all of the evil that's, that's reared this ugly head. The covers have been pulled back on evil, and some of us can't even imagine what's going on. But I'm telling you, this is what has been hidden from you all the time. It's been working behind the scenes. Now that it's come to the forefront, those of you who don't believe in the word of God and the things that it says, you know, it is sort of blowing you away. But I'm telling you to get back to scripture, get back to the Bible, you all, so that you can see what is actually happening to you out here that's going on. The value of the spirit of God in you is of such, you all, that it brings you to this place where that what man's wisdom is teaching or what the things that men are trying to convince you of, it has no bearing on where you have decided internally and eternally where you're going to reside. I've said so many great things in this teaching. And like I said, if the things that you desire has already been accomplished, then you have to get a greater understanding. Your way of thinking has to change. You have to think, you have to become eternally minded, meaning you have to become Christ-like minded in your thinking so that the manifestation of the things of God takes place in your life so that you can become a living testimony, because so that you can become an effective witness app to teach the things of God in its entirety and in its full truth. This is why I'm suggesting to you that you buy into this teaching. Quit being a uh a Christian of false humility. You say a lot of churchy things, but you don't believe these things. That's what I mean by the false humility. Not that the word of God is any less true, but you you don't believe it. You just say it because you've heard it a lot. You've heard it said, but you have never spent that quality time in God to make these things prevalent in your life. It hasn't become a part of who you are. So the value of the Spirit of God is so that you can think like God in every situation. Going back to something I said earlier, when the scripture says that he is a very, he is, it comes out of Psalms 46 and 1. It says that he is my refuge and my strength. He is a very present help in my times of trouble. When you're in trouble, you need an immediate God way of thinking to get you out of this situation. So it is the Spirit of God in you that you have yielded to, that you have totally surrendered and submitted to, that allows you to outthink your adversary. So when we're thinking like Christ, when we're thinking like God, how is it that Jesus was able to lay hands on people and they got well because Jesus already knew that what he was doing was spiritual. It defied the natural. It defied the spiritual realm, or the physical realm. So therefore, when he called on a thing, it was because he knew that there was a place in eternity that this healing, this deliverance, this breakthrough, this manifestation had already been recorded. So what Jesus did because of the spirit of his father in him, that when he speaks a thing, his word does not come back to him void. He spoke those things that his father would say. He says, I only do what I know that my father has done. What you hear me say, I say what my father would say. And if I'm speaking as the voice of my father, then what I said, it must manifest. So Jesus was calling, he was sending a present situation into eternity where it was already recorded, already recorded done and he was calling it back into the now to be manifested so when we think this way of ourselves 
Again, don't wait for somebody to confirm this in you. You confirm it in yourself. You confirm it with God that this is God's truth for you. So that therefore, when you start speaking as the Spirit gives you utterance, you will see signs and wonders coming to pass. You will see things happening in the earth realm. You will see things manifesting in the No longer just a Christian who has been perceived as one full of idle rhetoric, but the words that proceed out of your mouth, they won't return void. They will manifest because you're being led by the Spirit of God. This is the value of knowing the Spirit of God. We call those things that be not as though they were because we know we're calling out of eternity into time. That thing that has already been recorded, that manifestation, that healing, that's already recorded in eternity. Remember now, eternity. It always was, is, and it will be. So if it's already done, and I am a vessel of God, led by the Spirit of God, and I understand God, I'm calling my healing, I'm calling my manifestation from that recorded place in eternity into the now, so that it manifests for me in the now. I suggest that each one of you try this, because Pastor Jeff is on it. And this is where I believe, I, I'm saddened for those who can't grasp it yet, but I'm telling you, I'm going to have testimonies about God's deliverance in my life, and in the lives of those who I can teach how to do this for themselves. Why else would God's word say you all, you that you are the healed of God? That everything that you desire if you serve God, it becomes a byproduct of your finding pleasures in doing the things of God. Y'all, we got to get better at this because when are we going to do it? You have but one life to live and you have to make your put your best foot forward in the things of God every day, every second, every hour, every minute of the day. Because you don't get a second chance to pull this God walk off. What you do now. And when death comes knocking at your door, and we know that many people are leaving this earth, you know, uh, you know, in my own personal friends and uh, those that I know, a lot of my friends are, are, you know, passing on, you know, and I can only hope and pray that their relationship was right with God. And I pray if it's my time when it comes that I'm right with God so that my life and my living will not have been in vain. You know, I said something, I don't know what I mentioned in a previous teaching or another teaching before, but the Bible talks about a good man leaving in an inheritance, but it says nothing about the man, an evil man. A good man leaves an inheritance. So it had to be clear, you all, that what he was saying, the inheritance that a good man leaves or a God man leaves, it's not physical. It's not natural. It's spiritual. It's thought. I leave thought gifts for you. I leave God-type way of thinking that brings the things that you read about in the Bible that you stand so adamantly on in faith that it comes to pass. So a good person leaves a God way of thinking for those that come behind him to even further advance in. So this is who we are, you all. This is what we have been called to do. I pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you because it is so the value of the Spirit of God and the value of that Spirit of God being in you and the importance of it. Please, you all, buy into this teaching. Spend time in this, this teaching. Go to this, the sermon text, the scriptures that I've given you all today in this teaching. And I pray that it blesses you. Hey, you all, this has been a powerful teaching. And I hope that you get it the way that it was intended to be delivered. And as I always say, that there was something that was said in this teaching on this morning that has empowered you to cause you say, hey, look, it's time for me. I, I like that presentation that Pastor Jeff just presented. It's meaningful. It makes sense. And no, not only is it plausible, but it lines up with Scripture. So therefore, I'm God, I, I, I repent. I ask that you forgive me now of all of my sins and not having lived for you prior to now. God is already excited because your heart has changed. Going back to what I said now, it begins with me wanting a right relationship with God. You'll find a good church. You'll find a great place to plant yourself. And this is why you want the Spirit of God in you prior to going into finding that place of worship that you can plant yourself in. Father, come into my life, you know. I repent. Again, I repent. I invite you into my life to be that spiritual source within me, no longer around me. I want it in me so that I can outthink the adversary and defeat and be victorious in every situation in my life. I acknowledge that I haven't done these things before, but God, I want you to come in and teach me your ways, God. Forgive me all of my sin. I surrender all of my ways and my thoughts to your way. Teach me your ways. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you say something on that line, you all, you are saved. 
It would be great if you went to a church where someone can lead you into this type of repentance and come and giving your life to God. I'm telling you, don't wait. If you listen to my voice today, don't wait to come to God. Come to him today. Come to him right now. Get involved with a good teachings ministry. You know, I know that, you know, the situation right now, a lot of churches aren't yet back in full operation. That's okay. You know, I thank God for the technology, the power of technology that it allows you to grow in the things of God. So, hey, get this thing, get it in you, you all, and become that vessel. Become that united army of God, that soul winner that we each need to become. Again, I thank you all. And uh, just one last thing, you all, for those of you that ask, and you know, sometimes, you know, um, I don't always mention it, you know, because I'm more excited about the word of God, but uh, some of you all have asked to make donations, be able to make donations to the ministry. That's fine. We've set up a PayPal app and it's me forward slash kingdom one zero eight. And we also have a cash app that set up is cash tag kingdom one zero eight. So if you desire, that's a great thing. But as always, Pastor Jeff wants you to get this word in you. The rest will become a byproduct. Hey, I love you. I appreciate you. And if God says the same at about 11 o'clock this morning, I'm going to be chopping it up. I'm going to be doing a recap of this teaching. Join me for it. God bless you. And I hope to see you there. Love you.